Is there anything you're really proud of? The prolonged silence to my question was my answer. Then I made a decision. Do things, and we shall see. My definition of doing something is simple. James Dyson was frustrated with his vacuum cleaner, so he built a better one. Larry Page and Sergey Brin, annoyed by the chaos of the internet, they made Google. Travis Kalanick, me, I was annoyed too, with my PC audio. Switching devices takes too many clicks, and I'm a button guy. So I thought, fine, I'll make a button that switches audio devices. Sounds like a trivial half-day project. If you know what you're doing, I did not. Press the button, audio switches from one output to another, press again, switches back, easy, right? Uh, well, make the button work, the screen work, program the Raspberry Pi, write a C-sharp audio switcher, design and print a 3D case, and somehow get it all running together. May sound like excuses, but things I had never touched. Never used a 3D printer, never written a line of C-sharp, never used a Raspberry Pi, never... On no occasion use the upper data encoder. Oh, well, it's great. So let's just start from the end. On paper, it's supposed to be the most straightforward part. You design, you print, done. Okay, 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 okay. The pitfalls. First, I wanted all the wires hidden. Neat and tidy. Problem number one, my blender skills. Let's just say calling my modeling awkward would be a compliment. Problem number two, the print itself. Old, temperamental, it works only if you babysit it. The moment you leave the room, chaos. Unsurprisingly, my design didn't work on the first try, or on the second, but after a few painful iterations, I finally had something I was happy with. Printed statement in Python looks like this. Printed statement in C sharp looks like this. So why C sharp? This is what happens when you use Python to control audio devices. It's quick, it's easy. But the results. Let's just say I do not have 70 devices connected. Then I tried C sharp. Total pain. But at least I could make an executable app. And that gave me some control. I started small. First, just treating the connected devices, then establishing communication with the Raspberry Pi, so every button press was detected. Next, switching audio outputs, first manually with the mouse, and finally with the button itself. And in the end, the app worked. I even tested it with another computer, and to my surprise, it worked there too. That was the moment I realized this button might actually be real. Um, few things. First of all, thanks for watching. If you're watching this, um, second of all, uh, if you want to know more, please refer to this. Um, I'll upload the code um, to the website sometime later this week. Uh, should hopefully be helpful. Uh,